The Adobe Animate document that you'll see me working on in this video is available for download if you become a patron on my Patreon page. Link is in the description. So we begin the process by writing the story in Notepad++, and then I am researching what some uh, mine shafts look like in Minecraft, and then I'm making it uh, just a very basic mine shaft, and then I go into MC Edit erase a chunk so I can look in and see what a mine shaft looks like. I'm using a screenshot here, directly copying it, uh, adding shadow. This is a really tedious way of making shadows. I found a very fa much faster way later. I added lights. Uh, I found out that I could use a movie clip and make it, it have it set to inner shadow. That's how I made the shadow there. And then I go through and make the hotbar that Yellow uses, grabbing all of the necessary items from from my folder of Minecraft textures. So now I am adding rough keyframes to the animation. These are just the main keyframes and not the in-between full animated keyframes. You can see how far apart the keyframes are spaced. All that in-betweening will be done by my animator, Oxob, in this case. You'll see that the shadows don't update because I have the shadows on a different layer. I'll fix that later. And it's green because I have the movie clip set to hide the actual object, but have it set to the inner shadow. I find out later that that doesn't work, but I should actually just add the inner shadow to the stone texture itself instead of this separate thing. I'm adding animation for when he places down all the rails. I'm adding notes for my animator to use so he knows what my intention is when he does the in-betweens. Now I'm writing down a bunch of ideas, just kind of brainstorming what I actually want the entire roller coaster to do. And now I am drawing out a sketch for all of that, kind of laying it out in real space, and then using the pixel brush tool set to the size of the actual blocks. Then after this, I had an accident where the file got lost, so all that brainstorming got lost, so I'm actually just redoing it based on the recording that I took the day before. And then I add actual stone blocks to create the tunnel that is used. Here I am going into Photoshop and taking the lava animation texture file and converting it to a GIF in Photoshop so that I can copy paste that into the entire lava pool. This is the cavern, and I went to Google to find pictures of existing scaffolding that people use in Minecraft for their roller coasters. Now I am creating the, the cave that is in the very end. And for the rails, in order to place the rails very quickly, I actually had four different symbols for different multiples of rails, and then I could drag like a, a set of 16 rails and then break it apart to become two sets of eight and I could break apart one set of eight to become a set of four and that way I, I could ensure that the, the rails are spaced exactly the right distance apart from each other. These are all rough keyframes that I eventually in between later. I'm animating the, the minecart to, to be able to turn so we can go around those weird turns. The way that I did the animation of the minecarts, I only animated one cart and then I copied those carts and offset it by four frames so that all the carts do the same thing but offset in different times. That way I only had to animate one cart. And the way that they, each cart has a different stick figure in it is it, the tween is set to sync so if I change the first frame of the timeline it'll change the cart for the entire animation to be the cart of the different stick figure. Mm -hmm. 
This is the part where I add the the falling lava and figure that part out and the piston retraction. So I actually had a part of the animation where I was going to have anvils falling from the ceiling one by one and getting closer and closer behind them until they reach the, the cavern. But I ended up scrapping that idea because it was just way too complicated and it didn't even look good. So. I'm adding the rails using the, the method that I mentioned. So this is one of the parts where I had to animate the carts individually because the timing was different for each cart, especially when they were bouncing. So it used to say thanks for the ride or something, but I switched it to the end because thanks for didn't fit. So in order to make the track longer than it actually was, I had it loop back on itself four times. I went into Minecraft and figured out what carts actually do when they fall off a ramp and figured out the timing there. And here I go into Minecraft and I delete a couple more chunks in order to get another cross section and then basically paint in the, the caverns, the caves, the rocks, and the dirt using the pixel brush tool. So I used a, if you look, you can see the little green cross. I, I animated the cross doing one of those arcs by using nested symbols, and then I used that as a reference point to animate the, the carts going in a loop-de-loop. -loop. On the left you can see that I'm taking notes for what I want to change, and if you see that loop-de-loop -loop thing, that is when I had to change the timing of the of the camera scrolling. During the loop-de-loop -loop it had to slow down but that made the cart's speed get weird so I had to create a mock-up in order to figure out what was going on there. I'm adding the torches now. The torches are supposed to get more and more frequent as they go down. The notepad++ plus plus is where I add my revisions and I put a little blue dot next to the ones that I finish. Oh, I'm changing all of the, the background to be simplified so that it doesn't get so laggy. It gets super laggy with all of the, the rails and the bitmaps and stuff. So I'm adding the main poses of the stick figures here and each stick figure has its own timeline called cart underscore and then the color and so I can go into each of the timelines during the animation and just add the main poses to the cart and I don't have to worry about rotation that all gets altered in the main timeline and then the animation of the stick figures gets handled inside the symbol itself. So now I'm actually doing the in-betweens you can just look down at the bottom and see that the, the little black dots get more and more frequent. I don't think I added any in-betweens up to this point. Oxob did a few, but then he had to, but then he couldn't help out anymore. And so I did the rest. Also, if you look at the bottom right, you'll see how fast the, the clock is going. That's how fast, how many times this is sped up. You can see all this, the revisions getting added to the to the left. Figuring out the timing of the loop-de-loop -loop landing. More revisions.
I'm going through each of the revisions one by one. I'm adding the, the different types of stone to the backgrounds. So when yellow is pacing back and forth, I think I, I could copy and paste a lot of frames there. So even though it looks like orange is staying in the same place this whole time, that's because I double clicked the cart symbol and then that whole timeline is all inside the symbol. Now when he's walking, I have him just like going through and doing different poses while the, the legs are looped. And then I actually looped all of the legs of all the other stick figures too. So now I'm adding yeah the looped version of all the other stick figures. This part was a little tricky, adding them, getting them to go into the carts, because they have to go in front of the cart and then behind the cart, and there's four of them, so I have to play with layers there. Sometimes when I'm adding the in-betweens to the different stick figures timelines, I'll actually import the other colored stick figures into it, just so that I know the context. And I copy-pasted the animation for the beginning of each of the cart animations, and just changed the color of the stick figures. More revisions. I think I extended the length of this walk cycle here to make it a little bit longer. Here I'm adding sound effects. If you look to the right, you can see all the sounds in the library. And the folder that keeps popping up is my library of sound effects. And here I'm going into Minecraft and recording what a minecart sounds like, and then recording different samples of that. It took me a while to find a good minecart hit sound. It's not that easy to search for on free sounds or anywhere. I'm using Audacity to edit any sounds that I need to edit. I think I'm editing the pitch of the different minecart rolling sounds in order to make it sound faster. I added an extra layer to the, the sculpture and just added a simple shadow to make it pop. And I ended up actually doing the minecart sounds not in Flash and doing that in Premiere instead. And here's where I actually go into Premiere and use the different, the four different speeds. Each speed is set to a different layer and then I just make one of them get quieter while the other one gets louder in order to make it seem like all the carts are getting faster. So here's where I'm actually recording my face, I think. That's why you see the, the script just sitting there where my camera is. Now I'm doing some final finishing touches based on watching the animation and figuring out what needs to be edited last minute. And then I realized that I didn't add the little mini cubes that pop out whenever he breaks the block. So I'm adding all of those now. Now I'm making the thumbnail with some motion blur, rendering out the final file, uploading it to YouTube and to Facebook and Patreon, adding the end screen, uploading it, publishing it, and then reading the comments. And that's all. This animation took 85 hours plus 18 hours done by Oxob for a total of 103 hours. If you want to take apart the source file yourself, I'm offering a digital download to this animation file and all of my other AVM short animations if you become a patron on my Patreon page. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.